We can start whenever, man. Whenever you're ready. You see what I've been kind of, I've been, I've been peeping this recently. Whenever I say, "Welcome to the Best Friend Weekend Podcast," you got like this delay, cousin. You got a little delay with you, cousin. What you mean? Can you do not respond to? Welcome to the Best Friend Weekend Podcast. Like, and I'm supposed to be like, yeah, can you sp- yeah. And I'm on it, I'm in that, and mm, like you're hyped to be here. Couldn't you be like, kind of thinking about it too much, Dwight Howard? I'm saying like, just let me know when you, just let me know when you're ready to participate in this type of activity. Welcome to the Best Friend Weekend Podcast, man. It's your man, Aldo Nice. And this is Raj Smooth. Ooh, I like how you did that day. You hopped in, man. you like, the little intro music gonna be, uh, gonna be popping this week. I like that, man. We, we live and direct in, um, what we call this? Inglewood? Mm. This is Denver. I, but when the little snap, the Snapchat filter to say Inglewood. Specifically Inglewood. So, is this Denver, cutting? Or is this like... This is Denver metro area. Is this like Roperham, Louisiana? And this is like uh, A-Leaf. Oh. So, it's just a little... I mean, it's in... Okay. That made it make sense a little bit, because I, I don't know. have an A-Leaf address. Do you have a Denver address? No. You have an Inglewood address? Inglewood address. So, it's not like A-Leaf. A-Leaf doesn't have an uh, A-Leaf, Texas, mm. cutting. It's Houston. It's A-Leaf is a village. <laughs> Ealing is Lauraville. Wait till we start talking about people in tribes, cause then we could really talk about villages, cause I think it's a real thing, man. But um, it's just a live and direct best friend weekend podcast from um, Denver, CO, man. You know, we in Denver. It's not 420. The last time I was out here was 420. That's when we shot our first or did our first best friend weekend pod um, on 420. I'm not going to say I'm a drug addict, but whenever people come to Denver, it's like you feel like you got to be. No, there's a lot of people that come to Denver for just that. Just just for dopamines. Just for the dopamines. Um, um, I haven't partaken. I've been out here working, so no partaking in the dope. This time. I don't, do, dr- I don't, I don't do drugs. So you, Some people would say that weed isn't a drug. I can go to the corner store and get weed. Well, that's what I was alluding to when I said I don't do drugs. I, I meant that. Thank you. That's kind but of. You were alluding to the fact that weed was dr- drugs. What do you call that? Weed. I mean, yeah, I get you. I mean, but I asked you this when I came in. The first question I asked Raj, I was like, "Look, why don't you smoke the the Chiba living in Denver?" I felt like that would be that's like you either you might as well do it. And he, he proceeded to start telling me. He started telling me a little high story, and I just thought it was funny because everybody kind of has that. High, everybody who don't really smoke or don't smoke, quote unquote, has a high story that was like, why I don't smoke. Well, there's a such thing as a bad high. Or, you know, like you can you can have a high that you, hey, I'm just sitting here enjoying this high. But on the flip side, you can, you can not have a, a good high. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sitting here enjoying my high, but I can, I can have a bad high. I can have a high that I don't enjoy. Like, like Westgate is a bad high and like senior high was a good high? Is that kind of like what we're getting at? I mean, to each his own. Okay. Like, if you want like to take it to, was if a you bad take high. It to local, local high school wars, <laughs> then, you know, we can go there. But. Cadillac High. Like, Cadillac High wasn't senior high. I feel you, cut. But you start telling me your high story. I thought it was funny, man. I, I, what better way to start off the Denver pod than a reason why Raj don't blow that weed? So I've I've um, I've smoked before, I've smoked a lot before, um, and you know I used to, I used to enjoy it. I think the one thing, I guess, just to kind of pop it off is you know whenever you're in places that are not Denver, um, there's no difference in the in the weed. You know, there's no there's no indica, there's no sativa, there's no hybrid. Like in Denver, there's choices on the types of weed that you can partake in but whenever you're whenever you're not in Denver you're just kind of subject to whatever they sell you so um, <laughs> it's so, like you buy a beer and it's right. like beer so I feel beer. like the first you know and, and look and I feel like the first time that I the first time that I smoked you know I didn't really feel anything and then the second time I got high and I really enjoyed it and so I was like oh you know what this is I remember even saying to myself I don't think I'm gonna drink anymore I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna just smoke I'm gonna huh. drink anymore so I started smoking, and then I had that one bad high, <laughs> and just to make a long story short, I thought I, I was walking, we went to get something to eat after we uh, we smoked, and 
Um, I thought right before the moment before I walked into my apartment, somebody was gonna snipe me from the next building. Snipey, snipey. Yeah, snipey. Take a sniper rifle, put the scope on, pop me in my head right before I walked in. Just when I thought I was safe, on the ground. Whatever, you know, took a little hiatus, came back to it. Everything was all back on. I got back on it. Everything was good. You know, and then uh, I smoked again at a Lil Wayne concert. I ended up having those, I got to go to the bathroom and put some water on my face experiences. <laughs> so that was another bad one. And then right the night before I moved to Denver, I hit it. And that's when all hell broke, broke loose. I damn near lost my mind. I need you to elaborate. Well, I just, I just, you start to, you start to think about things that you can't wrap your head around. <laughs> You know, like, I mean, like death, like space, you know, just things like that. That's, that's just. So this was before you moved to Denver. This, this was wasn't the night Indica, before, the night before, the no, this was, this was weed. whatever they gave me. Weed. This was what they gave me. Weed. Gotcha. Marijuana. Green. Dope. 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 Dang. All of that. Ooh, doja. Doja. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, you know, I just started to think about these things, man. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't want to be high no more. And I'm not getting high anymore. Like, I'm, it's not going to happen. But what kind of reassured me, I might try, is we, Aldo and I go to the, um, to the, we went to the dispensary. And behind the counter, they call them bud tenders, not bartender, the bud tenders. The bud tender was saying, man, that's crazy. The same thing happens to me when I smoke sativa. Yeah. So I only smoke indica. That made both of us feel good. Right. That kind of put me back on track to where I may smoke again. But if I do, it's going to 100% be sativa. I mean, I'm sorry, indica. And that's the last chance I'm giving it. Okay. Because if I have another experience like I had, I will most likely lose my mind. And we would we would not want you to lose your mind. I mean, that's that, that would be optimal for you to keep in mind. I mean, when, when you tell your story, we were talking about that. I do. <laughs> I think I want to keep my mind. <laughs> we start, I started kind of elaborating on my, my, my got too high at one point story. It happens. It happens to everybody. I remember I was at Xavier. Not me. Well, this podcast is brought to you by Richard Demas. Richard Nicola Demas. Demas. Um, but yeah, I was at Xavier and I was hanging with my homeboy who aptly named is, is Smoke and when we put the pod, this podcast out he's the one who's doing um, the intro music this week he, he sent so me this he podcast sent me. is actually brought to you by Smoke yeah DJ On One so that makes sense that we talk about that why is not DJ Smoke he's real black so I think he like self like if you was a little short dude you wouldn't want to call yourself DJ Smart Smurl DJ Lil Smoke isn't black well he's black and they call black people stuff like Smoke would you rather him call him um, Cheeky you see what I'm saying? If they see call me I'm Smoke my whole life, then I'm gonna be. I'm gonna, I, I, if I ever become a DJ, I'm gonna be DJ Roger. They actually used to call him Doty Smoke because he used to be. He one time he was over there talking about, ooh, smell like that, Doty. And I heard that like that's what he said. I, anyway, so me and him, we Rebranded. he was actually his um, producing music for me at the time. One of my one of my close confidants when I was in the rap game, and we were at the house. We went to some other some cats from Xavier and uh, picked up a little a little sack of weed. You know, weed not. Yeah, no categories. I mean, the only categories they really have down south now is names. Names. They got names. You know, they'll be like, oh, the, you got the dirty um sweat drawers, <laughs> the dirty gym locker <laughs> locker room, lemon lime, lemon lime, lemon lime drink. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, yeah. but they got things like that. All that good is kind of what mm-hmm, I. Mm-hmm. I mean, you either on that Reggie, or you're on that good. At the time, it was all pretty much that Reggie. You know, two hundred for a QP. It was just Reggie Dirt Weed Louisiana. So we go over there by these cats. They were from Cali, and uh, they was like, "Oh, this is good, whatever." So we bring it back to the house, and we we, we smoking a little bit, and um, and I'm like, "Damn, we watching the N one mixtape." Um, that I test tells you when it was, and I step up, and I'm like, "Damn, I'm high as shit." So I'm walking around in the house. He's like, "Man, I'm high as shit too." So I go in the bathroom to splash some water on my face. I come back out. He's gone. I'm like, "Damn, smoke you just left." So I open the door up. I like spin that thing open. I'm like. I hop him out, all right? So I hop out the door. No, no, no smoke mobile. His smoke mobile. Well, and no, I'm lying. Smoke mobile's gone. His smoke mobile was dead. Oh. So I was like, oh, he in the house somewhere. So I go back in the house. I'm searching all around, searching high, I'm searching low. Um, can't find smoke. I walk back outside. Smoke mobile gone. My house isn't, I don't live in a, a mansion. Kind of, called him Stealth. Kind of, <laughs> <laughs> no, he was the, 
smoke. He's <laughs> going, right? So I walk outside. He's, he's out of there. And um, I go back in the house. That, that was one of them nights. Probably one of the first nights where I went back in the bathroom. I like I got naked because that's what you do when you too high and I start running water on is my that face. Way? That is exactly what you do. So like that's the norm? Cutting yeah I had to get I had to get them clothes off my chest. Like I couldn't feel nothing on my body. And I laid down on the bed. But hold on, is that an owl thing to do or no, is that everybody. what you do? No, everyone does that. Well, I've never I've That's never probably to why you I never smoked got again. naked in my friend's house. That only was my house. What I what I'm saying is what I should have done. Oh you was at your friend's house. I was at a friend's house. I was in Dallas. Yeah, you locked the bathroom door. You pretty much can do whatever you want in the bathroom. You can sit down and pee if you want. You can take off all your clothes to do a number two. Oh, I know, but I'm just saying, how long would I keep all my clothes off for? Well, I, I laid for a while and I was splashing water on my face. And I, that was one of those nights I was praying and saying, look, Lord, look, look out for me tonight. It's me. Look, don't, I, don't let me go out like this. Yeah, don't let me lose my mind. I, and, and I ain't going to smoke weed no more. I mean, evidently, a thousand blunts later, I probably didn't renege on that contract. But... I try to, you know, whatever it happens, and I'm not going, and I'm not the only person who who that's happened to. Mm -hmm. But uh, the funniest part that makes the story come full circle, I hit up Smoke the next day, and I'm like, Smoke, what happened to you last night? He like, I don't know. I was sitting on the sofa, and then I just was at my house. I don't even remember getting up or driving home. Like I was sitting on the sofa with you, and then I was at the house. We found out a little bit later what we we surmised. That uh, the dude who sold us the weed was like, that was, that was some little, a little dust in there. Little, little, little Debo's chicken coop type mm. type situation took place. Wow. But I didn't smoke for a long time after that. It was, and yeah, for a long time. It was like to one of my exes, she, she we broke up and she was on that weed big. And then it was like a cathartic moment for me. I was like, I want to get back on that weed because I was, it's, Anyway, and you know what? You know, granted, you, you had a bad. That was a bad experience. Another bad experience I had. I don't know why. I met this girl at a, at school, and for some reason, she always around the time I was smoking. I was cool with it. I'm I'm good. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, around the time that I was smoking, you know, and I met this girl, and I don't know how the conversation came up. But I tell you, a great conversation, meet girls for our listeners out there, is if you smoke, off her to smoke. She smokes without question. <laughs> so anyway, I met her. She came to the apartment. We smoked, but the kicker, the the, the catch twenty two is that I had a doctor's appointment in about an hour. Yeah. So for some reason, I'm thinking, you know, I, I can come down off of this high within about an hour. I never know how long. Do you yeah. know how long your highs last it is, for? It, no, do you know? No, we okay. so so arbitrary. Yeah, I don't know. I know whenever I drink alcohol. I'm not going to be drunk by the time I wake we up. We need to bring Blue on here to talk about um, them edibles. <laughs> so, I, um, <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Blue's. 500 milligram. Uh, Blue's Blue. California Experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, I got to the doctor's office and I remember having the highest conversation ever with the doctor. You know, like she was, she was saying something about what she just, what she, what she drove or something like that. And I said something like, well, maybe I maybe I should be a doctor. I told her that, and then she started telling me, like trying to like talk no. me out of it. She nah. was like, "No, the insurance is high or something." Nah. And so whatever. So like I don't know. It just kept the conversation going. I was super weird, and I got to the counter to pay, and I passed out. No, I passed in out. the doctor's office. In the doctor's office, That's I passed the, out. Can you think of a better place to pass? Out? Yeah, and they gave me they gave me orange juice and crackers. They hydrated you. They, yep, they gave me orange juice and crackers. Get up and get back yep. at it. And then I got out and, you know, the rest is history. Here I am. But goes there's, there's another high. There's another another tally mark on why I don't smoke. It's just I've had, I've had bad experiences and I don't like to put myself in bad uh, situations. And it's put me in some pretty bad situations. I got you. I mean, I just at different times in life. Back in, the, back in that time, I felt like we was watching Belly all the time. I thought I was like Lennox. I was like, I'm the toughest Jamaican Ross Clyde Bumba. Bumba Clyde, Bumba, Bumba, and all the rest of that, but I ain't really kind of went away. And, but either way, that was kind of like a little fleeting moment, man. We listened to that Chic Looch because I get high, and, and you know, whatever, that's not the name of the song, I get high, whatever it is. And, I get high, I get very high. 
<laughs> That's like Cameron or somebody. No, got that is Sheik Luch. Is it really? No, no. Styles P. Styles P. It's Styles P. Uh, we will bump that on the way to wherever we're going tonight. Cut, what, look, let me ask you something. Cut, like when you're talking about old music, I saw this meme the other day, right? And it was um, it was it was like a picture of Tupac and Biggie. Mm-hmm. And they said if Tupac and Biggie were still alive, what would they be listening to right now? Like, what would Tupac and Biggie be listening to? Well, no, no, that's not what he said. He said if you had to give them one album to like sum up what the music game been like since they died. Keep in mind, they died in like 97. What would that album be? So we were in the text group and we were going back and forth with this. I'm not going to just put it as one album. I'm curious your take on it, but I want to hear like, like, three. And I mean, I'll give you some wiggle room if you want to say three and a possible or something like that. Um, you could go bored and, and say four. But, like, pick some albums that you think Pac and Biggie would have to listen to if they shook back and was here. So I think Pac and Biggie, respectively, would be on some... Pac would be on West Coast uh, music and Biggie would be on East Coast music, naturally. Like, no, what would you want them to listen oh, to? What I want them to listen to, so I wouldn't ride in the car with Pac and uh, and Suge Knight and then bump some East Coast music. Like I would bump whatever they would want to listen to. But if I had to choose, if it was unbiased and they were being cool, I would uh, and I wouldn't get shot up in the car. I would um, I would listen to. I would listen. Okay, so my favorite uh, my favorite album. Is Friday night? It's actually a mixtape. Friday night light. Friday night lights by J Cole. Okay. So I would go with the Friday night lights. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So the Friday night lights album from J Cole would be number one. That'd be number one. Uh, okay. So that's what you would make. I mean, I'm saying that's what you would make Tupac and Biggie listen to. Yes. Friday it's Friday night, night lights by J Cole. Yep. Friday night lights by J Cole would be my first one. Uh, I'm not sure Drake has so much good music that I'm just gonna say whatever the best Drake I have to go back and take a look at the track list but whatever the best Drake album is uh, and the third one would be really really tough cause I think I would wanna play something hard for him and off the top of my head I can't think of anything hard so I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's my two it would be a Drake and it would be a J. Cole and then I have to sit here and I'll give you my third one after you give me your three. Okay, so if Pac and Biggie was back alive and it's, it's like, and they ain't been in the game since 96, 97. So my first idea off top is 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Try. I feel like that's the best album. Like, it's the best album. For, in my mind, it's the best rap album. If you could put yourself in a place to remember how them boys was coming, like, when the the hype was high 50 and then how he delivered with like Many Men and Wangster and that was a dope, dope album. I 100% agree. So I feel like Pac and Biggie got to hear and I feel like it's a similar experience to Pac in that he got shot a lot of times. He's from Queens. He's a New York cat. So he's like Biggie in that respect. He's on the West Coast making music. So he's like Pac in that respect. He's working with Dr. Dre and Aftermath. And like... I feel like Pac and Biggie want to hear that. Um, so that was the one I, I was definitely about. Um, I feel like Kanye is probably the best musician, like the way you just said Drake. I feel like Kanye is like the best musician. Well, what Kanye album would you have him listen to? That's hard. Late Registration is where I got to go with it because it's my favorite, and I really have no other reason besides it's my favorite. For some reason, I could really see Pac jamming to Graduation. Huh? I could really see Pac being like, damn, that cat is creative and talented fuck mm-hmm. so I got checked though when I said those albums by one of my homeboys uh, this podcast is brought to you by Jay Harry uh, do we have some Edo stuff to say no not today we're, we're, we always we always got we always got some Edo can- oh, banter but if you ever looking for a good a good door to walk through or a good door to walk through you know <laughs> skip skip past door A through D and go to Edo Edo <laughs> but Jay Harry hit me up and said say bro he was like you it's 400 degrees is what he said mm-hmm. and I thought that was one of the most foolish things I ever heard I was like 400 degrees why would I let Pac and Biggie listen to a Juvie album 
And his response was succinct and exactly right. That man said, them boys got to know how the South was coming. Them boys died. Like, I had to look this up. When them boys died, you know what album dropped four months before Pac died? What's that? Ice Cream Man. Like, the original like the masterpiece. Original, no Limit. No Limit. No Limit Soldiers. Before Make Them Say Um. Before any of that. Yeah. Them boys didn't even know how the South was coming. Like, they didn't have an opportunity to do it because they, they checked out too early. So, my point is, I understand that. And I'm like, they got to know how the South was coming. As a Louisiana homer, 400 degrees might, they, they could be correct. But you know what's funny? And, and so, I'm thinking about that because we talked about it a little earlier in the week. Sometimes whenever I think about Louisiana, and you moved, I moved. Mm-hmm. When I think about Louisiana, I think Louisiana is like a bootleg CD. <laughs> I, I hate to say that about my city, but I just feel Damn, like everything man. that's there. Like, I feel like Lil Wayne doesn't even really, like, exist in Louisiana. It's yeah, like kind of nationwide. But, like, you know, Atlanta. Let me live there. You know, anyway. So, Atlanta is like Atlanta rappers, you know, like outcasts. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Future. Like, it's like... I'm from Atlanta, I'm Atlanta. And then, you know, there's West Coast rappers and they rep the West Coast and then East Coast rappers rep the, you know, like everybody, Chicago and uh, J. Cole reps the Ville, you know. Say one bit? No, no, no. <laughs> So, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like Louisiana to me is kind of bootleg, but we really did come strong. I feel like Louisiana rap really did change the game. Like, and I, but I don't know if I, when I sit and I, when I say things like that, I think back and I think, to, and I say to myself, well, did Louisiana rap really change the game? Or is it just that I was so entrenched in Louisiana life? No, no, no. Everybody, everybody was on that, huh? Like my homeboy, um, my, this podcast is probably brought to you by my homeboy, Dick Irv. Check out, um, his photography, um, IG account. He's doing big things. Um, Dick Irv told me that, um, like he was, he was living in Saginaw, Michigan, you know, Draymond hometown, right? And he was no limit out, cash money, cash money out when he cash money so changed. So people nationwide, that's, like my point. that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm getting at. It was it was really that big. If it was really that big, because I don't know it was, the nationwide it was, popularity, but if it was really that big, then whatever the best one is, whatever the best, the boys got to know Louisiana upcoming know. album of the early 2000s, late 90s was. That's the album that I would have to have. I'm with, that's my third one. I, I, I can agree, and and I thought about it as a as a bigger South thing. If I wanted them to really respect the South, I could have went Speaker Box Love Below or Quimini Outcast album, or I could have went um, Ti Trap Music. They were probably alive for Quimini. That's just gotta be what year was Quimini? No, well, uh, Quimini might have been like ninety eight. You can check it on like Google it, but I think a Quimini might have been. I think them boys was. I think them boys was already checked out, but I mean, who knows? Like, one of the better Outkast albums. So, I mean, maybe you do have a point. What year did it come out? 98. 98, okay. So, and Biggie died in 97. So, they would have never heard that. So, they wouldn't even known about how Outkast was coming. So, they got to know how the South come. Mm-hmm. I can I can say 50 Cent. I can say Kanye. But if they don't know how the South coming, it's a problem. Now, I know some Jay-Z heads out there. Maybe some, some Kendrick Lamar heads more recently going to say that we tripping by not including them boys. But if, if I... Them boys heard Jay-Z. And I feel like them boys probably heard the best Jay-Z that he could... I mean, why Biggie want to hear Jay Z when Jay Z just regurgitate Biggie fucking shit? Like he don't need a he don't need to hear that. But I would want them to hear. There was something going on. Like you know, there was out there was there was there was Atlanta rap. And granted, I don't know the underground Atlanta rappers of the, of, that, of that time. But there was probably like Goody Mob or something. There was Louis, Louisiana rap was was ghetto, uh-huh. and there was ghetto rap out there. It was hood. It was raw, but it was ignorant. Mm. I would want them to hear something ignorant. I would want them to hear Man something that was just, I get on the mic and I say anything I want to say. I say what I saw. You know, like I rap about my experiences because that's what I want to hear. Yeah. That's what I want them to yeah. hear. I want them to hear somebody else's experiences in the hood. But I want them, I want him to understand that the person that's spitting didn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Did not care. And that's what I wanted to hear. What what I love about Louisiana rap in that in that sense is, you know, I, I hear this like Boosie and Webby them say this and always say it. They they use this term. They be like, 
but I'm retarded. You remember when B, um, Webby said, everybody piss in the toilet. I'm retarded. Them boys got hosts on Kevin Gates. Retarded. Um, like, cut them boys, they live by the fact they love and they they embrace retarded. And Louisiana is just so, so retarded. No, seriously. And then, you know, like, you got to be careful of what you say. Me and Cody have this thing. Shout out to Cody. Cody Ray, fashionista. Is the podcast brought to you by? This podcast is brought to you by at Cody Ray. I think it's YY underscore. Follow him if you need if you need uh, outfit ideas. Anyway, um, <clears throat> me and Cody got this thing where whenever we clown all the time, but whenever we serious, we say for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Kevin Gates says retarded for real. <laughs> so like, what I'm thinking to myself is like, is he retarded? Like, is he? I'm in, I I know retarded is not the 2017 politically correct. It's not the PC correct way to say. say Special, but that's the we're talking about Louisiana. But is Kevin Gates really special because he's it for real. Like he did, the, he used the Cody and me he's lingo. Not, he's, he's, not a, he's not Kodak. Kodak has a touch of retardation. You said that last week. Kodak, um, definitely. Is he's, he's not. He's not. He's not Kodak Black, but he's he's a little different. So I mean, yeah, I feel like them boys got to hear some some Louisiana rap. So Absolutely, they would one hundred percent agree with that. And I'm glad we got to talk it out because I was on the fence about it. But I feel like the dudes in Louisiana was retarded and ignorant enough. To where that's what I would want them to hear. And I feel like that's that's what Pac was. He was, that's what, that's what you know, Biggie was too. Like, they was like, you know, I'm going to say whatever I got to say. I need to get my point across. I want y'all to feel me. I want y'all to hear me. Okay. And that's a guess. Uh, yeah. So 100%. I don't know what album it would be. That's a long time ago, but I'm going with that album. All right. So we, we, we talked a little bit about your man's, um, about your man's 50. Because I said 50's album should have been there. Because 50 had one of the best albums of like ever. But um, 50's homeboy, 50's ex-homeboy, um, Floyd. Floyd got me hopping on a flight um, in about a month. Right. I'm in Denver now, but I'm going to be in Vegas on August 26th, getting it in. And I'm going to check out 50's former bestie, um, Floyd. So this week they had the media tour between Floyd and Conor McGregor. Now, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We kind of mentioned that... Um, Floyd and Conor McGregor, like I was like, there's no way that the American crowd is going to go for the American. They're definitely going to go for the white dude over the black dude. What if we were to change the American perspective? What do you, how, how so? I mean, just what if, what if we were just important enough to change the American perspective? Because I think if you, I think if I could sit America in front of me and I stand up on a soapbox or in, or in, a, in, in an auditorium and I have America sitting in front of me and I said... And I reminded them that, you know, if you pull against Floyd, you're pulling against the American and you're pulling for an Irish 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 guy. Yeah. Okay. So like, I mean, now there's so many dynamics to that, you know, there's white, black, there's, that's the biggest, there's, uh, that's the only dynamic. There's MMA and boxing. Like there's, there's so many, there's so many different dynamics just to kind of take it away from that. You know, you're pulling against the American. Right, I know, but term. you know what, the, Floyd Mayweather essentially is the Patriots, the Warriors. Like that's what Floyd Mayweather is. He wins, and nobody wants. Everybody wants to see the most dominant person lose. But you know, they, they kind of they they'll run the narrative of Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather beats women, or he has like domestic uh, abuse. You know, nobody condones that. I feel like you got. I feel like you do actually have to be a little um, special to like. I feel like people are born with that. Either you're the type of guy who will put your hands on a woman, or you're the type of guy who won't like save. Like extreme situ- situations, but my thing is, I feel like Floyd. They they people use that as like the scapegoat. What they really don't like is he's the he's the black dude who's loud and got a lot of money and talk crap about having a lot of money, and people don't like that. So I just thought that media tour was crazy. I don't know if you saw this. You may or may not have. You saw when he was throwing the money, like making it rain on mm-hmm. him, making it mm-hmm. making it rain on that boy. But um, also. Conor McGregor was like something. He, he told him the other day, like while they was at the thing, he was like, "You like to dance? Stand up and dance for me right now, boy. Dance for me, boy." And like the 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 week the night before when they was in a press conference, they was like, he called him a boy again, and people like checked him like, "Hey, man, you're not like no." And the next night he went out again, dance for me, boy. I tell you this: if I'm if I'm in a if I'm gonna fight somebody, like you know, there's we can go out tonight. Boy is a white racist word. We can go out tonight. Listen, we can go out tonight. And um, we may get in an altercation and fight. Cool. That's not I cool. I got to fight to catch. I'm not getting in a fight. That's not cool. 
I'm not getting a fight either. But for the sake, it's a possibility. It's a small possibility because I don't like conflict, but it's a possibility nonetheless. Nonetheless. So there's 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 televised and there's organized fights like people like it's like oh we're gonna take this guy that fights really well against this guy that fights really well and we're gonna put him on tv for america to see yeah. and make money off of it and fight yeah like get the hands out and 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 try to knock the shit out of each other that's a real thing if i'm a part of that if i'm on one of those sides i'm fighting somebody and it's televised or i'm just what it doesn't even matter if they set me up with a fight yeah i'm using Whatever, I, all logic goes out the window when you're fighting. Well, I, I mean, I get I'm you. not saying I get it. I can't kick. You know, like there's yeah, no kicking yeah, yeah. in boxing. I'm not gonna bite you. I'm not gonna hit you in the nuts. Well, my point is, but when we're talking, the fight, yeah, okay, you're saying you'll say whatever. I'm say, if it's, if I'm fighting okay. against if I'm fighting against a a, a Mexican. I'm going, I'm making, I don't care what Mexican joke I make. If I'm fighting against an African, I'm making African jokes out this world. Conor McGregor when he was fighting against this Brazilian dude said. Like, if this was 100 years ago, I would have rolled my horse into your favela and I would have killed everybody who didn't do, didn't work. That's what I would, that's what I would do. I mean, Mike Tyson told, what would you rather somebody tell Eat you? Your kids? What would you rather somebody tell you? <laughs> Call you a boy? Call you a Call boy and say, what, dance, boy? What Conor McGregor would have said, but 200 years ago, I would have rolled up on your plantation and, and, and hung you up by the you side and, and I would have took you, your, your wife in the house with mammy and um, and and made and made some and made uh, some mulatto chicken made some mulatto some, some joneses that's I, I didn't want to say that I know you were going I know what I wanted to say this podcast is brought to you by the joneses straight up uh, yeah, uh, the light skins but anyway so uh, <laughs> yeah I, if I you would have been okay with that if you if you brave enough to say that on national TV yeah. you got some nuts one. Um, but whenever you're in that profession, I feel like there's, I mean, look, me, I'm not a sensitive person. Yeah. So if, 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 if I'm trying to understand who Conor McGregor is as a person and, and I can, I can differentiate between Conor McGregor, the person and Conor McGregor, the fighter. And so whenever he goes into fight mode, he's like, I don't care. I'm a racist. I'm a, I'm a beat, I beat women. I do this, I, whatever I beat your wife, I'll eat your children, whatever it is I got to say to win. And then he goes, and then he's a stand. What if he said he'd eat your wife and he'll beat your children? That's that's, that's better. Being, that's basically like being a I father. Think I would figure. much rather somebody eat my wife <laughs> and, and beat my <laughs> then, yeah, yeah, I, and then eat my children and you know beat my wife. I don't want my children to be eaten yeah, like a meal. You know, hey, let me get the let me get the four piece the four piece children. <laughs> Uh, you, do you want boys or girls? Or, like, no. I don't think... Boys meat. <laughs> yeah. You want girls meat? Oh, boys meat. I'm boys meat. Yeah, no. So, yeah, I'd much rather him eat my wife and beat my children than okay. eat my children and beat my wife. Yeah, man. Because probably... Because probably, probably, that... Cause I probably wouldn't even... I probably wouldn't like to do either one of them. I probably love my kids, so I wouldn't want to beat my kid. And I probably wouldn't want to eat my wife. Well, maybe I... Yeah, I would hope that you would that's eat, my wife. Well, I meant eat my wife. Yeah, I, I, meant, you, I, meant, I meant eat her too. Well, the, Oh, like eat her with a spoon? Or like I mean a fork? A knife? And I meant what you meant. Okay. Well, what did I mean? <laughs> what happened? Yeah, okay, I got you. And at, at the end of the day, it's a hype machine. Mm. We're all trying to sell a fight, so it is what it is. Talking about children. I want to go. I want to talk about children. Can we talk about children? Let's talk about children. Okay. Um, okay. Let me get my composure. Huge Saints fans, both of us. I know we rocking Astros stuff, KC stuff, best friend weekend stuff. Get your best friend weekend hats, please. Get your best friend weekend paraphernalia. It's dope. We, we about to have a dopeness. But our favorite team, obviously the, the first best friend weekend hat was black and gold because we love the Saints. And uh, the Saints have been doing some of the most positive thing. I mean, they've been showing that they have a heart as an organization for the better part of a year. Because about a year ago, and everybody who follows the Saints, and people, this is a national thing now. This isn't just the Saints, me and you would know this story, right? Um, little Jairus is the little kid who um, the Saints adopted, like a Make-A-Wish kid, who had like a, was, is it a liver or a kidney? Liver. So he needed a new liver, and um, he and he didn't grow. He doesn't grow. He's like a, little, he's like a Benjamin Button. I don't know if that's, is that PC? Anyways, he's a, he's a well. He's not a Benjamin Button because he didn't start off old. <laughs> oh, he, he looked. He looked. Okay, we'll get to that. He's like an old. We Benjamin don't know how old he is, so we'll get to that. So he's Benjamin little. Button. Okay, so he's a yeah. Okay, he's a little guy, 
And um, the Saints have him around the practice facilities, and he'd be dapping him up, like, hey, um, Cam Jordan, hey, Drew Brees. So he's like, oh, look at the kid. And then you saw him on some news channels, and you saw him on Sports Center, and I'm like, okay, Lil Jarvis. Mm-hmm. And one day I saw Lil Jarvis doing something this week. I saw Jarvis doing something on social media. He was on the ESPYs this week, too. <laughs> and for whatever reason, I thought to myself, Damn, Jarvis, you're doing a little too much. And you texted me. As I was listening, watching whatever it was that came through my feed, and you had an interesting take on Jairus. So, go ahead. So, I want to know what age it is when you, you're not Lil anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I get it. Perception is reality, right? You know, you look at Lil Jairus, and he's little, you know, like he's a little guy. But he's in high school. Like, let's not forget that he's a high school kid. Like, I don't know if he's in high school. I don't even know when he has time to go to school because he's always at the Saints facility. So he must go to Saints High School, New Orleans Saints High School. So uh, anyway, say that. Um, yeah, one of his Saints. So one of the Saints schools, Catholic school. So, um, so my take on Jairus is, uh, I'm, I'm honestly like, I mean, I'm t- I'm kind of tired of him, you know. Like, um, I, I think it's great. I think personality is great. I think personality is great. I actually thought about it for a little while. And I said, um, you know, there's a, to me, there's a thin line between personality, personality and, um, and, and. Oh, you think he's, he's doing too much is where you go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's doing too much, but like, I mean, I li- look, I like the idea of Jairus. He's a little black kid. I like the idea of a little black kid getting some support from some... From the team from I some, love. Right, from the team I love and some some ritzy white men. You know, he got love from Goodell. He got 50, 50K from Goodell and, you know, and Benson combined. I think it's funny that, you know, usually you see, oh, look, the Jimmy V Foundation. We're going to donate $100,000, $50,000 to the no. Jimmy V Foundation. Nope. Lil, We're going to donate 50K to, to, to L-I-L Jairus. <laughs> Jarius, whatever his name is. I'm going to call him Jarius. 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 Yeah. Little Jack. Little, little Jarius. So, you know, the fact that, you know, it's cool that he, you know, like, I think, I think, honestly, I think he's, I like him. I, I like the idea. I like him. But I, but I'm a little tired of him. He, um, <laughs> he's 15 years old. Stop treating him. Nothing. Did he turn 16? I don't know. Yo. He may have. He, he's going to turn 16 eventually. Yeah, he got a liver transplant. So this, this podcast is brought to you by Jarius. And, know, by, and whoever lived that was, and whoever the podcast brought right. you by the, the definitely b- happy for him and your family. We and if and you lost if you lost a lover and you lost a love, be a donor, be an organ donor, save a life. But you know, I don't know. He looked like he had pretty stand up parents. Yeah. Well, except for that suit, his daddy. Had no, but I mean, yeah, his daddy suit sucked, but it looked like they were stand up, like they were, they yeah, weren't, yeah, they, they weren't were, like they bums. Were, yeah, they weren't dirty black trash. But the way that he acts in front of a microphone and in front of people, it looks like that they were bums at one point in time. Like the grown up version of Steph Curry's little daughter, kind of like just kind of a British thing. But I feel like I, I, there was a meme. You know, we love our memes, right? There was a meme, and it was. It was Obama, Curry, I'm sorry, it was Obama and Riley Curry. And it said the same thing that the Beyonce thing said. It said, the leader of the free world and, and, Obama. and Obama. Okay. Riley Curry is the greatest thing in the world to me. Like, I love that little girl. Yeah, it's because you're color struck like Kobe. I'm not color struck. Get out of here. I anyway, think Riley, Riley Curry is funny. But she's so, young. So you love the she's, little, you love the little light skin kid, but little dog Jarris, you know, you're getting If Jarris was actually eight years old, I'd love him to death. I thought he was eight when I saw him. I'm like, look at this little kid acting up crazy. But he's 15 <laughs> years old. So when we was watching, chill out. When we was watching him on TV. He head butted the mic. He was like too he much. He went run and he dove into like Drew Brees, and it was like rolling on the ground. Yeah, you're 15 years old, my dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, R. Kelly pissed on a 14 year old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Like, you're, like. You, you're old enough to be a, to like have like a, a spurts of grown up, but all he does is just <laughs> okay, is just talk so, shit so, so and stop. clown. So stop, please tell the people what you say he said. What <laughs> he didn't? I didn't. I don't say that. I saw it. I can't find it. 
<laughs> it's you, funny when you can't find something that you're looking for. What he said. I should but splice he's just it. I'm gonna splice in some 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 gyrus little commentary. I, I swear I saw this. I swear. You're kind of a celebrity now. Yep. Kinda. What you mean, kinda? There's no such thing as kinda. I'm up here. You're down there. I saw you knock down that jump shot yesterday. That was nice. I shoot better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Looking dude. Oh, no I, argument here. I'm not gonna disagree. You're, you're, not, you're not feeling the suit? No, you look like a grape, bro. <laughs> Big old grape. Duh. Last year, Jimmy V award winner here. Yeah. Yes. That's right. I think I, I might have to take I saw it. I swear I saw it. I need. I should have saved it. I should have. I should have saved it. Jarris was at Saints practice one day and he was just talking shit to the Saints. Like it was, you know, it was kind of like you know you with your homeboy and like you be all, oh, bro, you can't dribble. Wait. I don't know if it was Drew Brees or Luke McCown or Chase Daniel, whoever it was, they threw a pass, and I don't know what happened, but he was like, that's why you can't throw. <laughs> like, I, I need I need him to be escorted off the field. He's disrupting. I don't like the outfit. You, yeah, you, you look, look like a great. <laughs> <laughs> like, say, say, bro. Say, bro. You look like a but great, But on the bro. flip side, he's just jawing people. Yeah, he is getting on people. And, he's, and I guess America's loving it. I'll just see through it that he's 15 years old. If it was an 8-year-old, like I said, if it was an 8, 7, 6, if it was Riley Curry's age yeah. and he's being that brash and funny and whatever, but he's 15 years old and he and he looks like an 8-year-old and so that's why I think people like him so when, much. When you said that, it made me think about it. Um, and this, 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 this is going to take it in another direction, but it's still the same thing. Um, I had a dude who went to high school with us. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Bolo. So people know Bolo. Love or Chad. No one um, knows Bull Love or Chad. Bull Love passed away. He was a very important Well, rest in peace, Bull Love, but yeah, no one knows him. People in the B knew, like, some of these cats. So we got, a, we got 100 followers on Instagram. <laughs> what, maybe like, third, maybe t- 10 of them know Bull Love. When you get to 100K, no one nobody, knows Bull Love. Nobody knows Bull Love. But at this point, we still. Well, rest in peace, Bull Love. I mean, yeah, I'm going to say Bull Love. Tell me about Bull Love. So the thing about Bull Love was. Um. And I mean, a lot of gonna strike me now. I used to call him Cripple Chad, but a, a couple people used to call him Cripple Chad because he had a little. He, he passed because I think he needed a new heart. I think he got his new heart and then he passed a little bit after. But the whole thing was in high school, middle school, he was the worst. Like, he used to get on my ass all the time, clowning. Like, Bo Love used to clown me. Every, this brother used to call me Pebbles in high school. You know why he called me Pebbles? Why is that? Because he said my acne was like just out of that roof and I look like I had pebbles on my head. So I, as a kid, all I could respond, why well, you cripple, cripple chain? And I was like trying to come back at it, but all that dude used to do is walk around clowning people. And kind of like, we allowed it because you know, like that man was, that man was- That's just like Marquise, you know Marquise the Riddler? Nobody knows Marquise the Riddler. I, do you know Marquise the Riddler? No, I actually don't. You don't know the Riddler? No, I know Mortal Kombat. Same concept. You know Mortal Kombat? No Mortal Kombat. So, yeah, okay, so all of this is the same. Jairus compact. I mean, oh, um, concept. But, but Jairus but, isn't... Jairus is 16 like Cripple Chad. But he's not like special ed. Oh. He just needed a liver. Like a no, liver. No, no, Chad, lack- Chad... I never said Chad was special ed. I just said Chad needed like a heart, but and he, so he was kind of a little crippled, so he used to clown everybody. So he had a heart in his leg or something? Like, why, why was he crippled if he needed a heart? People love, man. God, Roger. God. Anyway, my point is. I just don't know why someone would be crippled and need a heart. <laughs> my point is. I don't know why you would be little if you need a number. Right? Why you couldn't be regular size? You might have you more than little. one problem. So, Bo Love might have more than one problem. So, did he need a new leg, too? Why'd you call him Bo Love? I mean, um, please anyway, so. Stop. <laughs> please stop. Please stop. So, here's, here's what I'm saying. I don't know. The, the lack of a liver. The lack of a liver may cause you not to grow. I don't know. Yeah. So my point is just we like we used to, the same way we used to give Bo Love like a pass for clowning on everybody because you know they may have some stuff going on with him. He had a tough life. That's kind of like the gyrus syndrome. You gotta let that man clown because that man need a liver. Cut okay? if you need cut if you need a kidney. So I'm it's just like uplifting to just have him at the Saints game and just tell him Drew Brees he can't throw <laughs> because he need a liver. Why you can't throw, bro? Yeah. Oh, Say, bro. just johnning on people's. Thousand dollar outfits because 
you know, he's a, he's, he, it's, he, he's a sad you, guy. Would like but to I have think, a little Jairus around I that think, you could just bring I him around Jair- and do stuff? Uh, no. I think Jairus deserved to win the Jimmy V Award. 100%. Mm-hmm. I think he made a name for himself with, with his personality. But I just wish he was eight. That's my <laughs> only thing. I wish he was eight years old and not 15 because he acts like an eight-year-old. It don't matter. They're not going to hear this on the podcast that we keep walking around to go get drinks. We should post this somewhere so they can understand why the volume get up and down, man. We're walking around. The, you know what? This podcast is brought to you, and I hope they hear it. This podcast is brought to you by Lord Sear. Have you heard of Lord Sear before? They do the drunk, like the drunk mix or something like that. I don't care the name of it. The drunk mix. They get drunk as hell. Well, we just killed the, we just polished off a of fifth. And we can tell them whatever kind of fifth we want to tell them. It's, it's a fifth of um, King um, Louis. King Louis. $10,000 bottle. The 13th. Damn. So, um, anyway. So, my, my point was, okay, yeah, I guess he do deserve to win the JVV award. And I thought he was fly the other day. I didn't know they made little people clothes in his size. But he was—he was. You give an Asian a piece of fabric, and I promise you, you get whatever you want. Ask Mister Bucket. Uh-huh. <laughs> you ever saw his suit? The thing ain't got no neck. It's like a Dracula um, two two thousand and Blackula. <laughs> Blackula, huh? Blackula manual. Okay? <laughs> no, man. No, Levert or somebody. Okay? okay, two more things. Two more things that we're gonna get out of here because it is. It is. I mean, it's we're recording on, on a Saturday night. It's officially best friend weekend. We're going to tell this story one day when people, we're going to tell why we call the podcast Best Friend Weekend and we're going to talk about like how this thing came about. Not two stupid dogs. <laughs> but Best Friend Weekend, you, under, you got to understand that Best Friend Weekend is actually a real thing. And this is actually a, the eighth Best Friend Weekend. Like where it's just me and Raj, bunch of, bunch of, sto- bunch of stories, bunch, bunch of cheers. events, bunch of, bunch of cheers. Um, from Best Friend Weekend, and you know, just so happened to be in Denver, we having Best Friend Weekend. Look, you can put Tim on speakerphone, man. <laughs> we see this podcast brought to you by by, by Gram Star Thirty Eight. By Gram Star. Okay, so anyway, kicking ain't easy. Uh, Fat boy sweat. So this is a real thing. We didn't have Best Friend Weekends. We didn't have a lot of Best Friend Weekends, and so it's like my point. My bigger point was it's Saturday night, and we in Denver, and my flight leaves at like eight a.m. So we about to go. Drink a bunch and go have fun in Denver tonight. So we're gonna finish it up with these last two talking points we want to talk about. You don't love Lavar. I think Lavar is an evil genius or just a genius. Um, what you think about Lonzo rocking Adidas the other night? He was wearing some Hardens, and then the night before he's wearing some Kobe's. I think Zo Two's. I think Zo Two's hurt his feet. Do you honestly think that's why he's I think not Zio wearing stuck? What type of technology can the type the type of the tech the shoe you technology Asian, you move Asian some leather, the you technology some shoes, right? yeah that doesn't mean that there's like you know great technology into uh, the shoe so, so you get you, you, you remember give me when a, them them Reeboks or them Nikes had them shocks in the back and they were supposed to make you jump high right right Cutting, that's no real technology that's shock a, technology shocks technology there's Air Max technology where there's air there's uh, maximum air there's lunar. Where you have a lunar bottom and okay. it's supposed to be, you know, moonwalk, whatever. I don't know. So you think his shoes is gone? No, I think his shoes are stupid. They're ugly, one. And I think that they, they like just, Kobe. they aren't, they look like, they look like the worst color combination of, of the worst Kobe that ever, that have ever come yeah, out. Yeah, they look like Kobe's to me. But they suck. And even a lot of the first Kobe's, ones. the first Kobe sucked? No. You like those old moon boots? No, that wasn't the first one. Kobe was with a Oh, yeah, the Nike. He's he's with talk, a, no, he started with Nike. Yeah, Nike. Then he had Adidas shoes. Yeah. And then he went back to Nike? Yeah. No way. Yes. We can look that up, but I'm pretty sure. No way. Pretty Kobe, sure. went, Kobe started with Adidas and then went to Nike. And then Undo. Oh, no. Well, okay, anyway, Steph Curry. Uh, okay. Anyway, so you think the the Zoles hurt his feet? I think the Zoles. I think he, I think he can't play well in the Zoles. I it's honestly proven. think it's it's a marketing strategy to say this. Listen, and I heard Lonzo say, and I thought about it that night before he even said that his dad's kind of like, "Hey, you own a shoe company, you can wear what you want." LeBron can't get out there and wear no uh, Adidas. Mm-hmm. Steph can't go wear no Jordans if he want to wear some Jordans just to throw back in the game. Mm-hmm. When you're not on a specific shoe contract, mm-hmm. you can wear what you want. And what's the point of wearing what you want? Lonzo's on a shoe contract mm-hmm. and can still wear what you want but because there's nostalgia. Do you also wear, do you have do you, do you only wear Nikes? No. So if I was an NBA basketball player, if you were Roger and they gave you a, if they said Raj, move Adidas coming at you, Raj, move, and we're gonna get you a shoe deal, you'll never wear Jordans again. 
So if I had some input on a basketball shoe, it would be tailored for me. A lot of people think that Steph Curry's career got revived because of the shoe that that Under Armour designed for him. For his, so his, for his, his, no, his ankles. Okay, so, so yeah. okay, but so hold on. D so, shoes was terrible. I have no idea, Good. you know. But anyway, it would be a shoe that would be built for me. So. Regardless, if there's a shoe that's built specifically for me, it's gonna be a comfortable shoe for me. And that's that's what the it. that's what would be. So if I had look, if I if I was in the league, and I had my own shoe, the Air Rod Smooth. The Air Rod Smooths. I would wear the Air Rod Smooths. Yeah. I don't want to wear. I'm I mean, granted. Yeah. Every once in a while, I may get an itch to want to wear some Jordans. You might, why would for you what? Scratch that itch? But I want to score. I want to get rebounds. I want to get assists. Yeah. I want to get. I want to get blocks. I want to be as comfortable as possible. So once my career really begins and I'm starting to want to make money, because I think that's why these guys play basketball. They make money. They make money playing basketball as opposed yes. to sitting in an office, yes. like you and I do, or, or you know, teaching whatever. I would want to be as comfortable. I would want to wear something that's going to make me be able to score easier or rebound easier. Or not get hurt, or whatever, whatever my whatever my goal is. That's what I would want to do. So if the so like, tools like, like, were designed specifically for L- Lonzo Ball to be Lonzo Ball's best, that's what I would wear. But I, I don't I don't see any I don't see any any value in me wanting to wear whatever. I wouldn't want to wear the Yeezys. Well, I, I don't know. I just think that it, I think it's a different type because we were talking about this earlier when we were talking about football uniform. And how, like, the, the young generation, they, they want to just, they want to wear different stuff all the time. That's why the, that's why the Seahawks got, like, 10,000 10, iterations. The reason we pick certain teams on when you used to play NCAA is because they got all that cool Arizona State got the maroon stuff, but they got the black, they got the white, they got mm-hmm. all these different uniforms. It's kind of like you, I mean, I get you can do a whole bunch of colorways with your same shoe, a la LeBron, a la anybody else who does that. But I just think there's something cool about um, Lonzo doing that. And Lonzo been cutting up the summer league for the last couple of days. I know it's just not in the ZO twos though. It's crazy, right? He had a triple double in the second. He did game. not. Yes, he did. He did not. He, okay. First Lonzo game he played terrible. Not. Second game he had a triple double. 11, 11, 11 with he the ZO twos. He didn't have the ZO twos. Okay, on. that's fine. Did he that's have fine. the ZO twos? Yeah, he did. They, 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 as of as of this as of this recording, he only played four games. Game one, ZO twos. He played trash. Game two, ZO twos triple double. Game three, Kobe's. He had like thirty six. He balled out. Game four, he had another triple double in those James Harden's. That's the only four games he played. So we'll be able to fact check that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I've watched Actually, it all this week. SB Nation in order. I'm, I'm, I've been watching it all this week. How about that? So it's all cool. I mean, either way, I, that, that's how you feel about it. I mean, I feel like it's a little genius. We're gonna talk about Lonzo a little bit more. Last thing, let's leave. Let's, since we're on basketball, I got, I got to end it with this. Um, beard gang, beard gang representative. Fear to be Aldo Nice. In Houston, I live in Houston. People of all races, mostly, well, I would, I would say mostly not black people, but I was in the airport and a black um, TSA dude did it too. This, like, on the way here. Hey, James Harden, blah, 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 blah. I kind of been resisting the urge to be like James Harden's cool. Like you saw me kind of the ice, the water is kind of melting on the on the like the second or third podcast when we did the Randall Sports Talk, mm-hmm. and I said if I could pick a, a like a best team in the playoffs, James Harden my point guard. James Harden go hard. Mm-hmm. I kind of have been like I'm one of those guys who I'm a I'm a Louisiana sports fan, Saints. So if I live in Houston and everybody like Houston sports fans kind of suck sometimes. Everybody's like, oh, um... Not as much as Dallas sports fans. Not as much. Absolutely not as this much. This podcast is brought to you by the Thomas family. <laughs> Doc. 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 Jared. And, and all the other ones. Yeah. All, and, and, and I mean, when, if you name it in Thomas, you're a Cowboys fan. Yeah. And right. this podcast is brought to you by you. Uncle Thomas. Okay, so... My point is... They all like Texas, Texas, Texans. And anytime the Saints do something, they hate them. So, like, I don't, it, I kind of started hating this, the team there. Like, anytime, Pep, and then you know how the Rockets is hard to like because they are just take all the players from the Pelicans and then make them win. Make them be six man of the year. Yeah, right? So, my whole big point was, I just haven't been a big fan of Houston sports like that. I kind of want them to win because I like the teams to be, I really like the Astros. Real, real, all talk. I, I wish it's, I, I really like the Astros. No hoes. Yeah, no, zero hoes. Um, you didn't have poo holes or no holes? <laughs> I know some. I know Albert had them poo holes. But the um, my point is just the, the the waters have melted, 
and I like James Harden now. I think I'm agreeing to say it. Last time I was in Vegas, this is a quick story. I'm not going to, because we're right around, about to hit up on that hour mark. We want to kill it before that. Last time I was in Vegas, we was at a Diddy party. We were in there. I was in there. Take that. Take that. I was killing it. You know, I don't know what they want from me. I was in there. Mm-hmm. I was getting it, right? Mm-hmm. And a group of girls came up to us and they was talking blah, blah, blah. And I was like, at the bar, they was like, we're not about to wait at this bar. They was like, if y'all want to drink, y'all come in the section with us. And I was like, oh shit, shout out. So we turned around, walked in the section, happened to be James Harden's section. He had a section. And I'm in James Harden's section. So I'm like, oh, I feel like kind of like a dude walking in some dude's section. So I felt away about it. He kind of looked at me. And I was like, oh, what's up, man? I live in here. Mm-hmm. The doubt? Mm-hmm. And man was like, oh, I'm in bed. I was like, oh, that man cool. That man didn't act like a, he was with some little, some little um, Kardashian looking thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it bugs it. It's like, okay, James Harden's actually cool. <sighs> There's no time when I thought James Harden wasn't cool. I kind of think James Harden's cool. And now he's got a feeling now. James Harden did not he's not LeBron he's not um, Kevin Durant I'm gonna wait I'm not Russell Westbrook I'm not gonna wait and then my contract's gonna run out and blah 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 and I'm gonna see who can win the best shit I'm in Houston I like Houston I like Houston I'm sorry they, Houston. they got dreams be live I'm watching Houston how much y'all gonna give me a few you and how much is how much are state taxes in Texas let me think look I'll I, I give you a hint <laughs> mm. Nathan. Zero. Nathaniel. Nathaniel and Gun. <laughs> zero. Da- zero state taxes. And James Harden just signed for like, what, 214? Plus he got the 200 from. What's your 200 plus 200? Your 200 plus my 200. That motherfucker, can you buy that? Like, he's got a billion dollars. I think I'm ready to say that James Harden is. Maybe after LeBron James, James Harden might be my favorite basketball player. James Harden is my favorite basketball player. They're not my favorite basketball player. He's one of my favorite basketball players. You like okay. Isaiah Thomas, bro? No, there's a no. I don't want to talk about that anymore. He's not my favorite. Isaiah Thomas is not my favorite basketball player. We talked about that already. I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> that's an hour long discussion. <laughs> but I think as far as just picking on James Harden's coolness, I think he's super duper cool. James Harden's cool. I think he's really really cool. But I, but the reason why I think he's cool is because I think he's a good mix of like cool like he's a good mix of like Cody Ray and Raj Smoot like he's a good he's cool as he can like dress and he's got the kicks and he's got the gear and of course with money you know you can get all of that I fame okay, can, I, can, I, can I ask you something and I, and I want you to continue mm-hmm. but when you're gonna mix some people up to make James Harden you're not gonna mix up the person who looks like James Harden but I mean you're like Cody Ray and Raj Smoot but I, 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 I mean I mean his, I mean his so swag I mean his swag and his personality. Like he's funny. He <laughs> so does funny. crazy stuff. You are funny, but you know whatever. So he does. He's ahead. funny. Like he, you know, after he scores, he sticks his tongue out and he does crazy shit. He makes crazy eyes and he does yeah crazy antics with his hands and cooks and all of that. And 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 I like that. He's a fun person to watch. Allah, the funniest person, low key. Low key, the funniest person in the NBA, the coolest person in the NBA. And I don't. I never really saw him. Outside on the outside of the court and how he dresses and whatnot, I never paid attention. It's Jimmy Butler. Is Jimmy Butler kind of cool? Jimmy, there's so many silent memes of Jimmy Butler on the internet where it's yeah. like he's just making a facial expression, and I feel like James Harden has a lot of that too. So I think I agree with you on James Harden on the angle that he's really cool. He he's commendable because he took a contract and he's staying with the team. They have there's a successful team. The Thunder were a successful team. Durant left. Mm-hmm. You know, Durant out. a bunch of a bunch of people have followed that same Durant model. We just don't like Durant because of you know you you went to the Warriors. Yeah. So anyway, one hundred percent agree with you. James Harden's one of the guys I could hang with him. So can I ask you something? I'm with it. Can we look at James Harden's like IG or something and find out what he does? And next best friend weekend. Can, we, can it be in Houston? You want to come to Houston? I'll come to Houston. Hey, man. You know I love Houston. We about to go get out in these streets. Can we go get out in these streets a little bit? Let's do it. Hey, man. It's been, hey, I love doing Best Friend Weekend.